But I think the main things is at the end of the day, volleyball is volleyball. It's in the same nine by nine court, and the rules are the same. So we. Uh, <laughs> Is that on the back of your shirt? Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah, it's on the back of your shirt. A little free shout out for you. Um, and it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You need to still execute to the best of your ability if you want a chance to win. What's up, brother? Special teams, special players, special plays. <laughs> Welcome to the 9 by 9 this is episode 115. My name is Everett DeLorme. That is Mr. <laughs> Rob St. Clair. And this is the 81 square meters of the best volleyball on the internet. This one will be a quick one because Rob's Purdue Boilermakers are in the NCAA National Basketball Final. But Rob, we're not here to talk about basketball. We are here to talk about the Veebs, the volleyball. Veebs. The Veebs. And it is a full-on playoff edition as we've got an update on the Italian League semifinals. We're still alive. No sweeps happening. The Plus Liga regular season is done. We have the matchups for you. Of course, we've got the Sutenlar League, the Effler League playoffs, the Mamara Spike Leaf playoffs, the <laughs> Bundesliga playoffs. Massive things going on in the, the VLA. But first and foremost, we need to jump back to the Plus Liga where the three-time defending Champions League champions will not be going to the Plus Liga playoffs this year as Zaxa loses sixth in a row to finish off the season. Moment of silence, please, and thank you. Wow. Six losses in a row <clears throat> to end the season. By wow. the, ra- the three-time defending Champions League champions. And like I was saying uh, the last couple of weeks, you can never count Zoxa out until they are officially ma- mathematically eliminated. They are eliminated. It is over. They have finished the regular season in 10th, which is crazy. Crazy. They've, they've missed the playoffs for the first time in, in decades. I'm not sure how long it's been, but... Uh, we can tie a bow now on the Zaxa era, on the Zaxa dynasty that was the last three years when they won three Champions Leagues. They've 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 displayed some of the greatest volleyball we've ever seen. Uh, it really defined the beginning of the 2020s decade in club volleyball. Like you, that that chapter in the volleyball history books will start with Zaxa. But it's over. Uh, their, their, their team seems to be breaking up heading into next year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of movement. And uh, the, the fact that a team with that level of pedigree, and we uh, obviously their struggles this year are well documented. We don't need to go through them. But uh, to not even make the playoffs in your domestic league, not even top half, not even top half in the Plus Liga, I, I will say I, I didn't expect this, but um, another spin zone ever. I think we both kind of were on this take. Is that maybe this is actually a good thing for Zaxa and their players that they they can just kind of rip the bandaid off of of the era and and end it here instead of like fizzling out of the playoffs. I'm not sure. What uh, I guess like when when you look back in the last three years, what's a what's a good Zaxa memory that comes to mind? We we can we can spin this in a bit of a happier way. Is it's more of like a don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happens. Sort of situation. Rob, I'm on Volleybox right now. I'm in the year 2000. 2000. Zach says yet to miss a play. I'm I'm going through it. There's one eighth in here. A couple of sixths. Other than that, the majority of Zach's finishes are top four finishes. In the, the, the yeah, there's a sixth right there. There's a there's a fifth. There's an eighth. In 2000, 05, 06, they finished eighth. That's the, that's the worst finish so far I can find on Volleybox. I don't know how much, like, luckily Volley, Volleybox is Polish. But, like, you know, even going into the 90s, they're winning the Plus Liga. They're getting seconds. Oh, there's a seventh. <laughs> oh, We're going so back. They, in, we're going back they to came ancient in, history they, here. They came in to the Plus Liga. They were in the Torin 1 Liga in 94-95. And, I mean, I'm assuming they finished like in the playoffs because they finished seventh in 95, 96. Uh, this is, this is like pre rally scoring era. This but like we, even, game even game. we go 96, 97, they get second, they got second at the Polish cup type of thing. 
This is the sort of franchise that we're talking about here. Yeah, so. a- absolutely. So this is massively historic. Um, and you, you're talking about one of the best memories. And oh, like, how many times did they come from behind oh. in the years? How many times did we we think that they were they were going to be dead? Uh, it was it, like they they fundamentally changed plus league volleyball and Polish volleyball. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, I, I know like there's been talks recently about the growth of the Plus League in the past years, and just in terms of the popularity. And there's no doubt in my mind that without three straight Champions League wins in a row for Zaxa, that this doesn't, you know, that the, the, the popularity of the Plus League isn't where it is right now. You know, the fact that like last 100%. year it, it was Zaxa, Zaxa versus JW as well. JW is going back to the final once again. Like there's just that continuity there and like it's it's really made a statement like it was a it was a statement piece that like hey we can go out and get leon and we can be one of the best national teams in the world but now our club teams are the best in europe and and potentially the best in the world as well too so like they 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 put themselves on there um how about how about you do you have a distinct moment i don't have any like distinct moments do you uh the first champions league run uh the mm-hmm. the tony ut year with nikola gerbich as the head coach mm-hmm. i remember yeah. a golden set they played against lube chivanova in the first round of the playoffs that year and, i remember that uh just the the ability to get back up off the mat when they're losing the fight they've gotten they've taken a punch but they're not dead yet and they got back up and somehow won three Champions Leagues in a row. There were so many comebacks, like you said. There were so many moments that we thought that they were dead and it was over, and they they showed so much resilience. They showed so much passion and team. Like They truly defined a team, one of the great true teams of all time in any sport. But at the end of the day, uh, all that they went through this year was too much for even them. And uh, there was a question ever that you posed that I liked, so I'll pose it to you in our show notes. Does this team make the Plus Liga playoffs with Tomas Semelvuo as the head coach? Yes. Do you think that in, in those yes. last six games, they lost six in a row to miss the domestic league playoffs? Do you think that if they keep their head coach, who won them a Champions League last year, instead of firing him midway through this season, do you think that's enough to get them in the playoffs? Yeah, because he, he writes the ship. Right, sure, you didn't have Slivka until recently, but you had the entire rest of that team for quite a while, right? And this was like a team that struggled down the stretch, and that this is like I I don't really care who the P two is there if it's Kitigoy and and he can't hit a ball because his thumb is broken or he can't pass the ball, then then sure, like whatever. You still have Bedmore, you still have Kashmarik, like you still have an all star team. That you still have Shoji, you still have Janusz, like. These are considered the cream of the crop players. And no other sport, would, if they just lost one guy, would it be acceptable to not even make the playoffs? Not winning a championship, okay. Maybe losing a first round of the playoffs with, with how close the plus is. But you don't even make it, right? They, they were never able to write the ship. It seemed to me like the firing of Tom, Thomas Samuvu came at the worst time, just as they were starting to get players back, just as they were starting to build momentum. And then the new guy comes in, and I'm sorry, I don't even know his name, but like they won a little bit with him, but they just couldn't keep that consistency. And to me, that has to come down to the captain of the ship. You have almost, at least most of your sailors back, but you're not able to, to, to write things and, and win quote unquote easy games. Like, there's 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 only so much that 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 can be done in that situation. How about you? What do you think? Yeah, I I agree. I I don't think that any part of this season was managed well by Zox's organization. They uh, were put in a position they were really unfamiliar with, and that was with a ton of ton of hardship. Obviously, they were not used to that over the past three years. Um, but they they did not respond to that hardship very well at all. And now a lot of the a lot of the things are way outside their control, but. Uh, it seemed like that was uh, top to bottom. Nobody knew exactly what to do to fix the problem this season. Firing Tomas Semelvo was almost like a PR move rather than a volleyball move. Yeah, And I do think that it backfired a little bit. But at the end of the day, as we pivot to looking at the Blue League standings, uh, this to me tells me 
that the plus league is the best league in the world and i don't think it's particularly close at this point like this is this is a team that won three champions leagues in a row that had basically the exact same team as last year and they don't even make the playoffs because of all the talent that was up there ahead of them and as we talked about zoxa had an absolute gauntlet coming down the stretch they had an extremely difficult end to their schedule now uh they had they had winnable chances in there but the the, the let's see Five of the last six teams that they lost to were playoff teams. In order, they lost to Luke Lublin, Gdansk, Vershava, Suvalki, Zabierce, and JSW. And remember a couple of weeks ago when Schliefka came back, they were up 2-0 two, two on Vershava and got reverse swept. Now, that, if, they had, that, if they had won that match, it, it probably wouldn't have mattered still in this case because they're still out by six points, but it definitely would have changed the vibe I, and the situation. I think it would have changed so much. Yeah. If they would have been able to get three points from that uh from that uh, Vorsava game, they would have been at 41 at that point, right? Olsen made it in with 45. And, and just as you said, like, it would have changed the vibe completely for, for that team. Um, but I mean, even like, even before that, like losing three, nothing to Katowice, like Bad. that, That's, and, and, and you, that was, you, an, that was the, the worst loss of them all. That, that was yeah. really horrendous. So like, d- like the three teams that they beat, Right, they were what eight and three. Sorry, three and eight down the stretch, and the three teams that they beat were Radom, Lviv, and Lubin. So not only were they only beating like non-playoff teams, they were only beating the worst of the bunch in the league and losing <laughs> to the playoff teams. So you can't sit here and tell me that they deserve to be in the playoffs. And I'm no, not I'm not saying you were. Yeah, right? I know that, anyone's that, agreeing that. Well, when they can't beat any of the playoff teams, they can't even beat Stal or sorry, like Sleps Slovakia, who is technically below them in the standings. But like that's it, it, to me, it was complete mismanagement uh, of that, and I don't see that flying in in a Tuomo Samuel Vuo camp. But at the end of the day, I think we do need to give this Zaxa team their kudos and put them in the Hall of Fame as. One of the greatest club teams of all time. For sure. I don't think I don't think you can get them necessarily up there with with Zenit Kazan of of the the twenty tens. However, what they were able to do and the like, they weren't the best team in the world. At least two of the three years that they won. That's right. They, they were they were never they they changed the game and in a, in a lot of ways. And um, I'm a little sad it's over. Yeah, I kind of am too, but we uh, the writing was definitely on the wall. And the last thing I will say is uh, in those three Champions League runs, Zaxa actually only won the Plus Liga in one of those three years. Yeah, exactly. It's important to remember that, that the, the domestic playoff success didn't always come hand in hand with Champions League success. Those are very different very different competitions. But as we uh, shift our, our gaze towards the Plus Liga playoffs, which are now set... Uh, it is important to remember that the format is different this year. Um, no best of five match series. It is all two match home and away Champions League style series, at least for the, the quarters and the semis. I think there's some little wrinkle about the finals that you can't be playing meaningless sets, but whatever. The the matchups are number one, JSW will take on number eight, Olshten. Number two, Xavierce will take on number seven, Stalnissa. Number three, Vershava will take on number six, Luke Lublin. And number four, Rosovia will take on number five, Gdansk. This was a very fun week that came down the stretch this past week uh, with two rounds of matches. Olshten clinched with two very good wins, uh, including a banger over Vershava. I think that was a reverse sweep as well, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. It, it, sorry, or they were at it, least it wasn't, but yeah, they were down two to one, and then there was a 36 34 in the fourth, which was electric. Um, then Olsten beat Suvalki on, on day 30 to clinch. Uh, the other than that, like the, the race for the eighth spot didn't end up being quite as no. dramatic as maybe we had hoped. No, oh well, but uh, there were, there were a couple other interesting things though, like for, for playoff positioning. For example, I think it was either today or yesterday, uh, Xavier Che played Stalnissa. And I think it was yesterday. And Xavierche played the bench. And in, in playing the bench, they lost the match in four to Nissa. And because they lost that match in four to Nissa, now they play Nissa in the first round of the playoffs. So I think there's definitely a little bit of uh, manipulation going on there. Uh, it, similarly, it, seem, it seems to me that they'd rather play Nissa than Olsen. Yeah. And uh, I kind of agree. I think Olsen is hot and they're. 
Um, they're and they're fun and they're explosive when they're good. And uh, Nissa is a little bit more predictable, maybe. Uh, but on the other side, you had Luke Lublin that played today, and I think the mm-hmm. second to last match of the entire season. And they played Katowice, who is not good, and Katowice no. had nothing to play for. And Lublin, if they had won, would have jumped over Gdansk to take the five seed to play, but they, to, to play Rosovia, who they've beaten this year. But instead, they confusingly lose the match in four. I think they started with the bench and then put the starters in, like expecting mm. to the bench to have won the match, and that just didn't happen. No. And so they, they randomly slapply lose a match, and now they get Vershava in the first round, who I think is far more dangerous than Rosovia is. Far more dangerous than, than Rosovia, especially right now. Vershava's playing with, with, with a lot of confidence, um, despite that that loss to um, Ols- Olsen to end the season, basically. Um, one thing I would like to note, though, about that Zavierci game is that we got Sam Cook. Uh, back oh, in awesome! For the first, the first time this year, he did. He did come off the bench to score three points, uh, get three digs. So, uh, abs- absolutely love that. But uh, real quick, Rob, I do want to break down and preview some of these series. Yeah, uh, only one. All three of the four series, the two teams split the season series. Um, so that that I think is going to be be a pretty fun. Only JW went two and zero against Olsen this year. <coughs> For Lublin, this is actually their first time making the Plus Liga playoffs ever. Um, so big shout outs to Luke Lublin, uh, who joined the Plus Liga back in uh, 2020. Um, they m- missed the playoffs the past couple of years, and we were able to make it for the first time for, for them. So that's awesome. And uh, for uh, Nissa, their win against Zavierci recently was their first win against uh, Zavierci since 2020. So um, that one was also a little bit different. As we s- said, they're going to be playing their. Um, their bench. I don't know if the quarterfinals in the Plus Liga, Rob, are giving me as much intrigue as the quarterfinals from the Super Liga. Um, I don't. I don't know why. Like, just like I know how strong Zavierci, Zjestevci, and uh, Vorshava are. Zezhov and Gdansk, I think, is going to be a good series, but ultimately, I, I still pick Zezhov. Like. I don't know if there's as much controversy in the four quarterfinals in in Poland. Yeah, in terms of the matchups, I do kind of agree with you. I think the top four teams are definitely better than the teams that they're going to be playing on paper. However, I think that, and I've I've been pretty vocally complaining about the change in format to the Plus Liga playoffs because I love yeah. a best of five match series like that. That's that that level of length and depth to a series and matchup adjustments is just really really cool. But <laughs> The 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 way that these series are going to work now that it's Champions League style home and away, I actually think plays to the upset potential a little bit more. Okay, uh, I, okay. Th- I think the the second legs of each of these series are going to be really interesting, especially mm. like even like Olsen JSW, like that mat that matchup that that Olsen, matchup interests like me. Olsen, I feel like is sneaky good. You know they they have that ability and they have that roster like with two Anigas and with um, yeah they have Alan, Alan Souza, Moritz uh, right Kroatek, and Manuel Armoa and the and their problem is that Nico Scherzen, their captain got hurt so they're handcuffed by the foreigner limit now and they uh, they have to either bench two Aniga or bench one of the wings but uh, yeah. even even in figuring that out uh, Javier Weber who is the man who coaches that team is gotten them to the playoffs and that is not going to be an easy team for JSW to beat. And even the same for like Xavier Che and Nissa cuz I I love Xavier Che. I've been very vocal about that this year. But Nissa is is a pretty hot team right now. Uh they beat Vershava in a reverse sweep a couple of days ago. They they beat Gdansk like they they've won 3 out of the last 4 all 3 against playoff teams. And now sure they beat Xavier Che's bench but like Nissa is like streaky. Now they do employ Machia Muzai on their team, who my feelings on him are well known. But if they bench him the way that they're supposed to, uh, then even maybe Nissa could get, could make a series out of that. Um, and then Rostovia is a roller coaster of a team. So like it's going to be all about because they're better than Gdansk, but will they play up to that level? The world may never know. Like the, this, when, when the second legs of, of all of these series, because of the format, I, I think are going to be legitimately really interesting. Yeah, I, I think so too. And it's going to be, it kind of makes it a bit of a shotgun scenario. Yeah. Right? Like we have two games Wednesday, two games Thursday uh, for the game ones. Um, and then we go Saturday, Sunday for the, for the games two game twos. So it really just makes things really interesting 
and really quick and then classic like plus league style we're gonna be able to get to watch all of the matches right one by yeah, one it's, so, it's gonna move fast and even 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 better for me um is that some of the game twos on Sunday are earlier on. So I think I'm actually ah. be able, to, able, able to watch that. And I love that. But yeah, this one, I, I know there's probably going to be some upsets. There might be some upsets, but I don't, I don't know if I'd call any upsets. Even, even yeah. Jejov over, over Gdansk. Like I, I still think that that team is skilled enough and that they, not that they know how to win, but they have won this year. Right. So. I agree. I do think the semifinals are going to be insane. Like a Vershava versus Xavier J series is going to be must watch. Uh, Ronnie Cuban spike in the chat predicts JSW versus Vershava. Uh, I disagree. I think I think Xavier J will go to the final. I love that team, and I think they have a very legitimate chance to win. So uh, you, I mean, you you have you have called Xavier J from the beginning of the season. I have. So I will I will give you your flowers on that. Absolutely. So, yeah, team's real good. Uh, I, I I will bring that up. Um, I'm happy for yeah. Sam Cooper, by the way. I didn't know that he was back healthy. I know he had back yeah. surgery, but uh, um, that's good news. Yeah, so am I. So it, it looks like he's going to be a part of the uh, VNL roster and, and stuff like that. And uh, maybe even a part of the, the B team, too, with 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 what's going to be going on in Canada. So, but that's, that's, that's for, for another time, uh, yep. another place. Is there anything else we want to talk about here? Plus Liga Rob, is there, there nope. are we, are we uh, done? We're done with the regular season. I think this is the last league in Europe to finish the regular season because it was so long. So, yeah, the playoffs will move quick. The pace of it kind of actually reminds me of the Turkish league, both men's and women's, which we'll talk about yeah. a little bit later on. But now we got to spend some time talking about a playoff that has been well underway for a long time. You, it's, let's go. It's the, it's the Scudetto semifinals. And we were wondering, Everett, on last week's show, will we be already talking about a final at this time this week? Like it, it was possible no. that both of these series were going to be sweeps, and the answer is no to both. I mean, we were, we were I'm, one game into the series at that point, Rob Sinclair. But like, I mean, Trento yeah. went up two to nothing. I mean, we, we certainly don't have to talk about that match number two. The match number two that I that I want to start with is one of the great matches I've really ever seen. <laughs> game two of Milano versus Perugia at Milano last Wednesday. A 171 minute banger of a five setter. All time, very classic. close to three hours was an all time, all time classic. Milano wins it 20 to 18 in the fifth on a sick one on one read by Marco Vitelli in the middle on a stuff block. Marco Calvez, let's go. Marco Calvez. But the story here, as far as individual perform performances, is very obviously Ferre freaking Ragers. Dude. What a master class by this kid. 31 points on 26 for 42 attacking. And the balls that he swung at and killed in that fifth set. Cons- consistently, too. Consistently. Like, consistently. Out of and places that just made no <laughs> sense. Like like 20 feet off the net, falling away against two blockers, like taking rips. Like the, the dude made every play. And it was what it was an all time instant classic. And Perugia had swings on match point. I think they they were up 14 13. And Ole Plotnitsky had like at least two, maybe even three swings. And Milano Plotnitsky. slowed them all down and turned it back. And uh, God, the atmosphere was so good. Just, just, just it, fantastic, fantastic. That Milano amazing. stadium might be one of the nicer stadiums on the inside. I don't know how it looks on the outside, but on the inside, it's one of the nicer stadiums in in the Superliga. But it was electric. electric. Um, and when you look at the efficiency, though, of Milano, like Ferry Riegers, he had five overall errors, two unforced, <laughs> got blocked three on 40. He hit 500. He hit 500 he on hit the match. 500, <laughs> like his efficiency for three hours. 500, for 500 of the match. That's, <laughs> that's right. He hit 62% before the efficiency and he was un- absolutely unreal but the efficiency in the entirety efficiency of the, of the entirety of milano is what the, won them this game like these teams are so close so neck and neck in all of the other categories except for errors right, right. uh when, when you look at it three unforced errors for milano 13 for perugia Dude, right. three it's unforced key. errors in a five set match is amazing. It is 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 absolute. If you absolute want to think about it this amazing. way, that's one for unforced error per hour that that match was played. 
wow. That's <laughs> unbelievable. They, the claim they had like Plotnitsky doubled the amount of errors that all of Milano did. He had he had <laughs> six errors, right? And that was really what and because other, other than some of the offensive errors, Perugia was playing a solid game as well. Sure, yeah. They, they, they weren't necessarily dominating in the same way, but that to me was just it was the fact that Milano were was on their game. Like even Kaczynski was 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 out there was out there was out there balling pretty well. Yeah, they didn't give him eights. too much. They didn't give him too much uh, volume. He went nine for twenty one. Uh, he kept it real efficient, uh, and he got four aces in the block. Right, and he passed. I would say real solid, 42% positive, 20, 26% perfect, right? Um, but Ishikawa and Riegers were both phenomenal in, in, in this match. Um, just, and man. Paolo just... Poro, too. I oh, think Poro, you have to good. give so much Definitely. credit to Paolo Poro in the way he runs this offense. He's just such a good volleyball player. Right, totally. his volleyball IQ and his game sense and his emotional intelligence throughout the game is so high. I can't believe we used to clown on this man, but <laughs> it is because he used to play for M- M- in Milan, Modena. Or Modena in jerseys that are two sides. swimming in a jersey. And I mean, his first couple of years, he really could not back set the ball. But like, kids growing up, he's getting a lot better. He's setting a great team and a great offense. And uh, but like, I I cannot overstate how blown away I was by that Ferry Rager's performance on Wednesday. That was, it was spectacular. It was spectacular. The confidence with, with which he was playing, the confidence that his team had in him, the the fearlessness to take rips at balls in situations that made no sense to swing at. And just, just, just spectacular. The kid's going to be so good. 31 points. And he'll even step in and receive sometimes. Oh, yeah. He, he yeah. plays defense. Like the, the balls that he dug in that fifth set, like Milano doesn't win that match without Ferry Rager's on defense, not to mention the offense in transition. Like just spectacular volleyball from a young kid who we've had our eyes on for a little while, but he is like burst through the door as one of the great young prospects in the game. Now, here's the thing. Milano had maybe the most polished and beautiful statistics of any match they've played all season. 10 aces, yeah. 19 errors serving. Yeah. Fantastic. Only three unforced errors total. Nine blocks as a team. Mm-hmm. They needed 20 to 18 in the fifth to win this match. That's the type yep. of effort that it took to beat this Perugia team. And it's just going to be so hard to continue to do that. For, to to maybe come back and win the series, at least they've given themselves another chance to play another game at home. But I honestly, I give Perugia a lot of credit here because the of the Herculean effort that it took to actually beat them, yeah, in one I, match I, in the playoffs. That's exactly that was Milano's peak in my totally opinion. totally. Like that was as as you said, an unblemished game. It was perfect. It reminded me a lot energetically of. Um, Queens' win over Trinity Western in the quarterfinals of the U Sports Championships this year. Where I actually, it I like that comparison. It, it didn't seem like Milano was extending themselves. Sometimes there's a team that's a clear underdog that's just playing out of their minds. And last year at certain times in this, in this very same series, I got those senses from Milano. This year in this win, I didn't get that sense. They were just playing their purest form of volleyball but, you know, other than a few errors on the other side that, like, I thought were really due to the to the stress that Milano was consistently putting on Agreed. through their defense, through their serving, through their blocking, through through kind of everything that they were doing, that's why we were seeing a little bit more error generation. Um, you know, and if we won't, just want to stay on this series real quick and, and just jump to game number two, this is where we saw the door kind of swing the other way and we went to the absolute utter domination from Perugia on all fronts, right? Like you can't even like you, you, you look at the stats, like I don't even really need to go, go to through the volumetric stats for this one nope. to tell you that Perugia dominated in every single facet of the game. And the tank just wasn't as much. Yeah, four, 14 blocks for, for Perugia in four sets is a little absurd. Yeah, that's sick. And then Wasim Bentara hit 559 efficiency. <laughs> yeah. 24 points on 22 for 34 with only three errors. Like that. But you also you have also disgusting. have been you also have Bentara going 22 for 34 with the other your 
with f- three other players in double digits. Right. Right. Flavio Flavio has eleven, including four blocks, seven for Flavio, nine. Four. Flavio's having himself a really good playoff, man. He's yeah. he's looking like the third best middle in the league. And now and he hasn't been in the net. <laughs> he, yeah, he hasn't been miracles, as much in the net. Miracles so, do happen. So, like, so far, we just really haven't seen the consistency from Plotnitsky uh, in this series. Even in this one, he wasn't that great. 822 offensively, um, and his efficiency was was below 30, 30%. Yeah, and um, that so is not, good serving, too, which is yeah. a little weird. So not usual uh, numbers, but they were still able to utterly dominate uh, in this game. Like, four blocks for Flavio, four blocks for Semenyak, 14 as a team. Um it, it, it wasn't nearly like it wasn't as close no so that'll be the tough part for for milano going back home this week is like do they feel like that level that they achieved in game two to win that epic 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 match do they feel like that is a level they can get to again with their backs against the wall i won't put it past them because they did do it no. last year and this team is good but uh this perugia team i have a lot more confidence in than ever to uh just to execute all of their all of their superiorities that they have in this matchup and there are many oh i may have lost everett okay well we'll uh we'll work on oh hey everett are you reconnected i'm, I'm back now. oh fabulous yeah sorry That's i okay. just got a random let's, thing let's uh let's move on to the moans of trentino series uh we don't need to talk about match number two uh no. it, it was it was actually- i think i think for match number two all that needs to be said is that there was one player who had a good game once again, and that was Eric Lepke. Arthur Schwartz played so, and I, th- I think that that's one of the biggest things that we need to talk about. With match two is the poor performance of Schwartz because it, it directly affects what happens in in match three in terms of, in terms of the lineups. But True, Arthur blocked fifteen balls in that match, which is gnarly, yeah. and it was actually kind of a miracle that Monza even took a set. But again. Uh, Monza was without Stephen Marr for match number two. Yeah. Stephen Marr came triumphantly charging back into the starting lineup in match number three with Monza against their with their backs against the wall in Trento. They go in there and they win it 15-13 in the fifth to keep their season alive. Marr back from a head injury with 22 points. Ron Takahashi, the clear MVP, we'll talk about him in a minute. But you mentioned Schwartz's struggles, Everett, in, ma- in matches kind of one and two. So, Oh, yeah. So and even towards the end, like I think it's been like even like like looking towards the end of the uh, the Lube series as well too. Like we we saw him struggle. Like definitely in the one match that Lube won or the last match that Lube won, like he he got pulled as well then. So you know I I think this has been his first full year as a starter and you know, going down the line, like people are starting to pick up on his tendencies. Like he he's told us before himself he's a line hitter, right? Um, and he's, he's not a skilled guy. He doesn't have that many shots in his arsenal and he, he's going to need to develop, de- develop a little bit more. And, uh, I think ultimately it was, it was the good decision to, to put Eric Lepke, uh, on the right side. And, you know, we've seen what it a, already. This season. Yeah. And, but what a decision that was, I mean, backs against the wall in the playoffs on the road against the best team, maybe in all of volleyball, you run a three outside hitter thing. I mean, now Lepke has played something that resembles true opposite like a couple different times this season yeah. but uh he was in the passing pattern a decent amount of the time like he got 20 reception attempts like they were they were moving it around a la trentino two years ago mm-hmm. which was cool when they had like Livia and kaziski moving around like that and lepke was was outstanding he went 21 for 44 uh but ron takahashi uh kind of put the team on his back here in a lot of the moments down the stretch and said finally so, Finally, exactly. Finally. We're, we're waiting He's... for an offensive performance like that, dropping 25 points on 24 for 43. And uh, that was exactly what we had kind of been waiting for. And and another, like, he was passing well. He was he was serving well. You know, everyone was really on Arthur for playing bad in game number two. But Rand's numbers were just as bad. He had just as just as uh, just as poor efficiency. Um, his serving was was just as bad. Um, his his blocking was bad. Arthur was actually digging has dug more balls than Rand in in the playoffs in general, right? So Rand Takashi for me has been yeah, that's a stat for you wow. right there. Um, so Rand Takashi for me has been real weak, but he showed up. Matt, right? And it reminded us kind of why he is so so revered um throughout this one. And 
the way that they played kind of like changed it up and it was way more free throwing. They limited their areas much more, especially from the baseline. If they're serving was a lot better and their passing was way, way better. Not only was the infusion of Mar into that passing lineup, but Gagini had maybe his best game of, of the entire tournament. He dug 12 balls, um, which is huge. He, he led them. They were siding out on, like they were getting attacks from his balls two thirds of the time. Right. So two thirds wow. of the times he was making a dig, they were able to transition to that into attack, which is absolutely massive. And he passed a two, a 2.27 uh, in this That's match very with good. getting, with, with getting the most targets of, of 30. Um, I don't know. Uh, they were really kind of going to everyone like third. It's literally pretty even 30 for Gagini, 20 for Lepke, 22 for Mar, 20 for Ran. Um, but the passing for for Monza in this one is what kept them alive and then once because the passing was there like Kachopa is so slow that's he's, he's pretty slow he, he is he is he's pretty he slow is, he's as slow as me basically he's <laughs> so slow but because the passing was good it was just they were just able to open things up and that's why you see like Lepke with 24 Mar with 22 and Rand with 25 in this one so I, I have a question, Everett, because uh, I wasn't able to watch most of this game. I turned on set four, like in, in between VLA games on Sunday. But uh, I was looking at the serving numbers because we lo- we always like to look at serving numbers when we talk about a Monza game. Five aces, 15 errors is not bad. But literally half of those errors, seven of them, belong to John Luca Galassi, which is pretty typical of him. He, got, he did get three aces, but uh, he really likes missing serves. Did the rest of the team change their service strategy? Did they kind of take their feet off the gas serving? Was it a little more conservative or did it look normal to you? Like Mar was serving more normal. Rand was serving normal. Lefke was throwing in some floaties uh, in there. Like he was maybe picking and choosing. Um, So yeah, I'm wondering in terms of who has the red light, like who has the green light versus the red light. Galassi has one mode from the baseline, right? Yeah, the, giving him it's he's kind of like Schwartz, like giving him a yellow light. There's there's not even a point because he no, doesn't have absolutely to not. To, it's just yeah. swing in right. because once again, like as you said, over half of their serving air is coming from or not over half, just just about half of their serving air is come coming from uh, uh, one of their bald middles. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like, but like once again, if you're gonna tell me that a mere a, a middle is gonna give you a three to seven like ace to error ratio, I'll take that. Yeah, it's not terrible. I'll, I'll absolutely take that, especially since all of my outsides are limited. Like everyone else who's who's been able to put pressure on is is really limits. But having Mar back on the lineup for this team really changes the dynamic. He's just able to add some stability in the bit, like in the serve receive, a little bit on defense. You know, uh, s- some of those outlets. Like he's still like you could tell he was like maybe a little bit rough like rough around the edges a little bit rusty uh a little bit but his return was massive for this team and uh but once again like this was potentially a last ditch effort right oh yeah because because that this they they brought out a different look one day that they couldn't change up once again you you saw different things in serve receive and in defense and and they were they're doing different things you're telling like Trentino is going to be able to go back to the drawing board and plan for this. For sure. So at and this that's, point, that's at, exactly at this, what I was going to bring up. Yeah. At, at this point, it's just going to be mono, mono, mono. And I kind of love that. Yeah. I, I give both Monza and Mulatto a lot of credit for extending these series, but uh, Trentino and Perugia are so much the better teams in each series that I feel real confident about both winning these matches on the road on Thursday. I have a I have a pretty strong feeling that both these series are going to end in four, and that's okay. okay. Like it was a again, Milano played the absolute best match they possibly could to beat Perugia in five. Mm-hmm. Monza, I think, played the absolute best match they possibly could to beat Trentino in five, and Trentino didn't have a particularly good serving day, and yep. they had to bench Tricycle Man a few times because he made too many hitting errors. They brought in Gabriele Nelly, which yeah, that good. that was one of the big things for Trentino is that Ricky was not good right on the so, right side. If all that comes back down to earth in both directions just a little bit, you're looking at Trentino and Perugia in the final this time next week. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and predict that. But that okay. these these have been compelling semifinal series because of the way that Monza and Milano played this past week, stealing a game. And I'm happy that that happened. I mean, and it does it does give credence that they do belong to be as 100%. Well, right? Like, that they were both the underdogs uh, in their 
in their first quarterfinal series, they were able to get those wins. If they were both going to go up there and get three donged in the series, both of them, then you kind of like, ah, eh, well, maybe like maybe it would be better to see a Lube, maybe it would be better to see a Piacenza, like these team these teams with these potentially bigger names. But they're going out there, they're getting dubs, and that's all that matters. They're, they're making it interesting. So well said. And, and gonna... there, there was there was a moment, Rob, when I was like, because I was watching on the subway on the way up, Monza versus Trento, and Trento started pumping them in the first set. Uh, and I was like, this is over, like, turn it off. One of the one of the guys I coach is a, is a fan uh, of the show. Shout out to Liam. Um, and I was like, Liam, like, it's it's already over. And I was giving him updates. And by the end of practice, and I was like, I don't know how they've done it, but Moans has won. So <laughs> it was it was one that I had to go home and and, and watch last night. For sure, I, it will. Uh, it is shaping up. If it is Moans and Milano in the third place series to go to Champions League, that will be very fun, especially because that's like a cross town rivalry. Moans is that, in- yeah. Monza's that is the immediate the, suburb of Milano. That is a derby matchup. Uh, and that will be because it would also be, I think, a first Champions League for both of those teams. Right. Very so there's possibly. a lot. There's a lot on the line for those potentially two teams. Although I don't want to talk about that just yet. OK, Rob, oh, yeah. we still Not have a, We still have another game. We still have game four for both of these series going down on Thursday this week. Correct. Ch- changing it up a little bit. Uh, which means that I might actually be able to watch it. So, yep, Thursday games. That's uh, looking forward to that. Make sure you join the Volleyball Source Discord. That's where we'll be talking about it. And uh, before ever we jump over to the women's side, because the women's Italian playoffs need to be talked about as well, we got to talk about thatvolleyballstore.com. Absolutely. Head over to thatvolleyballstore.com. Use the code SPICY at 15% off of your entire order. Your entire order. The entire the, order? The entire thing. Wow. The entire thing. 15%? 15%. All right. Uh, so use the code SPICY. You'll get a, uh, 15% off of your entire order. You can get some spicy volleyball. You can get some Where's Daddy merch. You can get all of the fun stuff. Uh, Wait, did somebody, of, say, did somebody say did somebody say Daddy? Daddy. Daddy. Oh, where, oh, where was oh. Daddy last week, Rob? Daddy Stankovic was hidden somewhere on last week's show because that's what we do every single week. We place this beautiful man in one of our assets and you guys got to try and find him last week pretty subtle he's just kind of hanging around like a ghost there in the background of the plus liga table that we were talking about last week can you see him ever you see him fading yes fading there, just hanging out hanging out in the open space <laughs> i feel like you've done that before what was it there's there's something that we've done oh like one of our drafts that we've done where you had this done so i, I was just assuming that you've done this to all of the all of the uh, um, the standings and stuff that we've used before. Nope, but uh, that was uh, I wanted to go away from just putting him on somebody's face for the week, so I put him in the Plus League standings. But yeah, uh, we got a couple people that found him. Somebody says Daddy in the Plus League leaderboards background. Uh, Jad Ham Z. I'm sorry, if I don't I don't know what that name's supposed to be. And then Lifeless Vimo just simply says Dad, Dad, Dad. Dad, <laughs> I like it. So yeah, if you find Daddy Stankovic this week, because he's hidden somewhere, make sure you note the timestamp of where he is, and you save that timestamp till the end of the show when the live stream is over, and you comment that that timestamp in the main YouTube comment section after the show. That is how you can earn a shout out next week. All righty, there, kids. Uh, moving on to the uh, League of Volley Feminili semi-finals um we talked about it last week did we talk about it last week yeah we, we talked about it last week no we talked about it some last week because yeah. uh there was only really one thing left to decide and that was who was going to earn the honor of getting smacked by corneliano in the semifinals, and uh that turned out to be novara congratulations to them novara beat kieri three to one in match number three of the quarterfinal series uh, good match. Uh, Novara's firepower was a little bit too much. Um, Kieri had a very good season. They won the CEV Cup. Uh, Kaya Grabelma definitely ran out of gas. She wasn't quite as good statistically in the playoffs. She had 19 points, but 18 for 44 with 10 errors. Then this match wasn't great. Uh, and I actually think the club posted today that uh, as because the, as, their season is over, which I like. They, they don't play a stupid fifth-place playoff. 
uh, that uh, Kaya Grabelna will be moving on from Kieri. Her Kieri career is over, and she's been there for several years, been a really good player for him. But end of an era there, uh, and uh, Avery Skinner was good in that game. Katarina Zakayu was good in the middle in that game with nine kills, four blocks. But um, Novara waited too much firepower marina markova is a budding superstar she dropped 25 24 Ooh. and now it is it is novara who has earned the honor of getting smacked by corneliano in the, in the semifinals because like i said uh just as we predicted semifinal match one is in the books uh corneliano donged novara to pieces it was not really very competitive uh, i did look at the stats i didn't really watch it set number two is 25 to 12 Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Novara, thank you for participating. Good luck in the third place series where they will play the loser of Scandici and Malonza, which was a very interesting game one. Uh, Scandici comes out with the three dong. That does surprise me. Yes. That I that is a match that I missed um, to watch, and I wish I would have been able to see it because that is not the result I would have predicted uh, given some of the results and a three dong at that, um, close three dong, but a three dong yeah, nonetheless. But a three dong, a three dong nonetheless. Like it twenty, like twenty three, twenty two, twenty two. Um, I mean, it ultimately it, it is still a three dong. Um, Antropova with nineteen in this one, fifteen for thirty one, three aces and a block. Paolo Agonu fourteen for thirty eight with six errors and got blocked three times. Uh, she did get uh, three aces, though, uh, for 17 points all around. But, yeah, not not super good for Malonza, uh, except for Rafaela Foley getting six blocks, which is sick. But uh, it going to a little too error-prone, not a very good match from their wings. And uh, you did get a very good Juting game. Yes, uh, thir- 13 points on 10 for 21 sky high efficiency uh, that was very nice well. yeah it was also uh, i think we just learned somebody in the discord posted today that ju is committed to playing for the chinese national team again this summer so she's Ooh, spicy yeah, makes things in her and Li ying ying that is a gnarly outside hitter duo but that actually that honestly might be the best outside hitter duo in the world internationally yeah Inter- inter- internationally yeah probably is so we'll, we'll after just... after hillary howe and alexa gray though <laughs> oh Everett, we will talk about this the Sultan yeah. league in a hot second um yeah i didn't i didn't get to catch this malonza scandici game either but i do like this series i'm excited to watch game two it's going back to monza uh when and where or sorry when yeah. and what time is that game at Bundle. it is wednesday uh, 2.30 2, p.m. Eastern. So you get the appetizer of Corneliano probably donging Novara again, and then uh, then you get a good one on Wednesday afternoon. So I'm excited to watch that. So right. uh, Louis Liu in the chat says, Catherine Plummer was the least efficient Emoko pin in the, the first Novara game, and she hit 565 efficiency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Corneliano oh, just plays on a different level. They're so good, dude. They're they so they, good. they they just play on a different they're level. So good. Oh my god. It's yeah. Very, Hawk, it's, it's, it's Hawk very... seventeen for twenty seven. Uh, Kelsey Robinson ten for thirteen. Wow. Uh, Plumber fourteen for twenty three. <laughs> uh, they killed sixty percent of their balls as a team. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Disgusting. That's, that I love gross. It's crazy how lopsided the women's game is right now towards the best teams um and and not only towards the best teams but just in terms of how the game is played like it's so right side dominant it's been it's been very interesting to watch and so all right uh shall we move on to the turkish league yeah let, you is, go let, men, let's men's or women's your choice let's do uh let's do women's first um because we're a little bit we're not a little bit further on, but I mean, I like the women's more. Me too. Um, <laughs> so uh, we now have a final set after both both these series. They are the best of three series, and neither, neither needed to go three. Fenerbahce took GHY down 3 1, and Exasha Basha three donging Vakifbank. Um, both of them now qualifying for the playoffs in Vakifbank, just going out with like a soft little fart, eh? 
It was a pretty uh, a pretty soft, pretty flaccid bowing out of the playoffs for Vakif Bank. Uh, now, they were more competitive in this three-dong than they were last week. Like, remember that match we talked about last week? They lost a set like 25-11 or something. So this is yeah. a little bit better, but uh, the, the Vakif Bank program is clearly not what it used to be. I think there needs to be a lot of hard conversations had about what Giovanni Gadetti is doing and what their strategies are with roster construction and who's going to be their opposite next year and all these major questions. But uh, Edzaj Basha deserves to be in the final over Vaka Bank for sure. I think they're better. I think they, they're going to put up a much better fight against Fenerbahce. Uh, Tiana Boskovic was pretty good in this last match, but Hande Baladin has out of nowhere been playing outstanding. She went 13 for 22 for 15 points total. Like, really I like that they're giving her more volume. I, agree. I, I, I like, you know, like I've, I've noticed that in general when they give their left sides more volume, then they do a little bit better. Vrankova wasn't fantastic in this one. She was six for 19, but luckily you had Baladin step up. And we have Baladin dropping 15, Boscovich dropping 15, and sorry, Baladin dropping 13, Boscovich dropping 15, like attacking wise. And the other side net. Like Karatasu had four points. And then she got subbed out for Thompson, who was all right, but three for 10 with two unforced errors still isn't great. Gabi just struggling out there, six for 21 with like a what, 5% efficiency? I'm not going to do the math on that. It's terrible it's as, as it is. Like just bad. the efficiency, the hitting. Vakuf Bank hit 30, hit 30%, or sorry, hit 42%. That's not even like their, their efficiency. They're like a P. P, uh, PVF team out here with their with their efficiency. <laughs> yeah, that's like, bad. Now the 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 the, the wrinkle that Vakipane tried to throw in there was to start Chaka Bogu in the middle, and she was amazing. Eleven yeah. points, ten for fourteen. Led Vakipane in scoring from the middle. The problem is they have foreigner limit constraints if they want to try and do that, which is why you saw Alexia Karatsas who started opposite because um, she, I mean, she was Romanian, but she counts as Turkish. Uh, you saw Sarah Van Allen set a little bit as well, which I was a little surprised by. Gadetti tried to pull some strings, didn't work. It's about Zajabashi was too good. I, I am impressed with Hande Baladin just playing better. Maybe it's because she knows that um, her leash is longer in domestic play because she's Turkish and she can't really get benched because of the four limit. Maybe maybe that's it. But uh, yeah, we've got a final. It's uh, Fenerbahce versus Zajabasha. I'm very excited about this final, and it's a best of five series, which is great. So uh, it starts tomorrow, actually. All right. So it's tomorrow, it. uh, noon Eastern tomorrow. Uh, we get and those ones. Those ones on YouTube. So those are watchable. They, oh yeah, yeah. Same with the men's. We're we're gonna be, yeah. We're we're gonna be deep in in Turkish volleyball the next couple of weeks, and I'm really excited about like this this final series. And we'll talk about the men in a, in a second. But this final series will be very good. It will be very very good. Yeah, I, I fully uh, I fully agree. Although it has been a bit of domination for Fenerbahce. It has. I, I do believe like the season series or the recent the recency is four and one in favor of Fenerbahce. Zashabaja has not fared well uh against Fenerbahce in general. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right about that. And it's uh Fenerbahce is a difficult team to beat. I mean Fenerbahce beat at Zajabasha like two weeks ago to end the regular season and they didn't even have Melissa Vargas. So we will see what happens. Uh, moving on to the Turkish men's league, uh, the the pace in, in this league is real fast. Like they got their entire semifinals done since the last show that we did. Hawkbank donged Galatasaray. They, they I think they went six and one in sets. Took care of them no problem. Thanks for participating. You started Jan Hadrava. He had two terrible matches. What do you expect? But what's real interesting here? Match one: Fenerbahce yeah. versus Zirat Bank in the semis. This is only a best two out of three series. It's the two seed versus the three seed. Fenerbahce steals one, 15-12 in the fifth, and then they repeat it on the road. They win 15-13 in the fifth to go to the final, and Zerot Bank is dead. Goodbye, Zerot Bank. R.I.P. You know what? They went out without even putting Luciano Vincentin ever on the court. And you can't blame Matt Anderson because he dropped 23 and 29 in these two games. Okay. <laughs> 29. Matt, match however, two. he was bad. 14 and 15 once again in fifth sets. Five setters is bad. Okay. You need better. 
from your opposite, who should be the best, like one of the best scorers in the league, right? Yeah, Tremont was quite have, bad. 12 you for can't 27 have with nine. Drazen Luberich and Dick fucking Coy <laughs> outplay you. Dick Coy got laughed off of Scraw Belchita. They didn't even make the playoffs in the Plus Liga. <laughs> Facts only, dude. Facts like, only. You, yeah, you, Dick Coy dropping twenty seven on you to eliminate you from the playoffs. Zero bang. You should feel very bad about that. You right? should like, feel Luberich bad got about subbed that. out. Like for who? Hassan Sikar. I've never even heard of him. They gave him one ball. <laughs> Actually, good for him. Like he came in in the like at the end of the fourth. He got one kill, one block, and he put three serves in. He has no errors. So cool. that's that's good, that good, good for you. <laughs> this this to me, it just like Kavaz Mustafa, like that, like something needs to change there. Yeah, that is out. Absol- absolutely terrible by Zero Bank. Another thing no that- reason they should oh. be losing to Fenerbahce in the way that they did. Never. Another thing that this proves to me is that Murat Yeni Pazar must be the starting setter of the Turkish national team. I think Arslan actually's yeah. time is done. I think that yeah. was proven this series. And uh, actually, yeah, I have the tiger in the chat says uh, Murat is headed to Zirat Bank next year. So he actually hurt his team next year by beating them this year. But uh, <laughs> he's the better setter. He's the best Turkish setter. Uh, and uh, I just feel kind of bad for Matt Anderson and Berihan Bulbul both because they were tremendous at their respective positions all year. I mean, Anderson, 29. I mean, come on. 24 for 43 with two blocks and three aces and a five-setter with the season on the line. What more can you ask the man to do? Well, Rob, it just means that he's going to be looking good for Team USA coming into the right. summer season because, damn, those are some impressive numbers. Um from the Penn State alum over there in Turkey. But that is right. So yeah. the finals for the Turkish men start on Thursday. Hawkbank versus Fenerbahce. It's a best of five series. I would Ooh. be shocked if Fenerbahce took a match. I, would I wouldn't. Shocked. I wouldn't. Let's let's look into this here right now. So Fenerbahce did beat Hawkbank in the last match of the regular season uh to okay. stop Hawkbank yeah. from going undefeated. Which was yeah. impressive. They beat him three to one, so uh, they've got good recent history there. Um, but unless Dick Coy is going to go out and drop twenty seven again, match in and match out, which is not even close to reliable, uh, like Namir and Irvin Ingapet, then Mirza Lagumja, like I trust that wing trio a lot more than Drazen Lubiric, Dick Coy, and I think it's Yeet Gulamazolu. I think is their other outside hitter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so, okay. Halpang has absolutely manhandled Fenerbahce recently. Here. There's that one, like, I'm looking at it here, and they're like one in, one in six. Ouch. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good at all. So I, I'm definitely more excited about the Turkish women's final than the men's final, but I will be trying to watch both of them. They uh, have, in general, been on YouTube, and make sure you join the Discord. I mean, if Zira Bank it. wouldn't have sucked, they would have been fine. I know, and they've won. They've beaten Hawkbank. I think the last two years in the playoffs, if I remember. Yeah. Right. Oh, they, uh, last three. Zirat's won three in a row, and they bow out in the semis to Fenerbahce. Ouch! Yikes! Yeah, tough conversation is going to be had over there. Uh, all right, a couple more playoffs to catch up on. We've got the Bundesliga playoffs. Unsurprisingly, Berlin has donged Lundberg in the series. They advanced to the final. Uh, Lundberg's season is over. Good season, but uh, they, they were never going to beat Big Brother Berlin in that semifinal. However, Giesen versus Friedrichshafen has become Ooh, she's a, still going, a banger of a series. They are going to match five on Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, and I really hope that we can be able to watch that game internationally. I really, I really hope so. doubt it. I heard that the next, the only next uh, spontent game um, that was being planned uh, was, was game one of the finals that's Um, the worst match to do it for i mean i fully agree you don't need to tell me right you're you're preaching to the choir uh, (laughs) i know over here right i know (laughs) you know what i've been real sad that i haven't been able to watch uh this geese and versus uh for just and series because there's some premier canadian talent on both sides of the net um i mean 
I thought, Rob, that after like Geeson was able to win that game one in a five setter, and everyone's like, "Oh damn, okay, they're able to win." And then Friedrich Schaffen comes back, three dom. Um, but then in game three, Geeson turns around, bam, at home, and their own three dong off the back of my boy Jory Mantha as well too, who's MVP with sixteen points. Uh, big big shout out to him. But then you have Friedrich Schaffen turn around, bam, three dong the other way and now we have uh game number five coming um also that man you see on your screen right there uh mr jackson young dropped five in the last game so he actually beat out uh yan for now thomas for now's little younger brother spot oh man i always forget that he exists yeah because he sucks <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm sorry, but like, you lost your starting spot to a first year player who played for Nipissing University in North Bay last year. You're a for now. Like, that shouldn't that shouldn't happen. But on the other side, like, mad shout out to Jackson Young because I absolutely love that he's been balling out. So, Rob, big I'm with you. I to, wish uh, big shout out to JT Hatch as well. He's playing for Geeson. He's a guy I really like. American guy can play outside or bro, uh, like a, a undersized guy. Super smart, high volleyball IQ. I uh, like JT guy, a yeah. lot. UCLA guy. So, yeah, he's coming. Yeah, he's, he's coming. He's coming off the bench nicely for uh, for for Geeson. And I mean, hey, if the Dutch national team is having some brothers, if some issues with Futsal Termat because he sucks. <laughs> um, and can't get over his whiny stage. He should go play for Piacenza. That would make a lot of sense to me. No. <laughs> like have have Romano and Wuzer to Matt, and you just have the mobius right side in the absolute world. Like no. <laughs> my uh, my goodness. Um, I would pick up if if you were um if you're the Dutch, I would pick up Michael Ayi. Yeah, this Look kid's playing Russian. well. This yeah. kid's playing well. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Bundesliga. We'll see if we can uh, get in the Discord. We'll see if we can figure out a way to watch match five on Wednesday. We've also got the Marmara Spike League. <laughs> also, Maybe someone in the Discord who has the Din thing can uh, stream it for us. Stream it. That would be awesome. Similarly, I, I would like to watch a little bit of French ball uh, because uh, we've had next the, year. The, next year, I think this... I'm paying for I'm paying for the LNV. Yeah, it's only 15 euros for the entire season, and it's like no, oh, that's pretty. Really... It's it's not necessarily worth it now, but you get playoffs and everything. So I think next year I'm gonna I'm gonna make that that purpose. Well, I hope their broadcast improves a little bit because the few times I've watched it's been pretty brutal. But uh, also the worst playoff format in all of volleyball, dumbest thing I've ever seen. Best of fives in the quarters, best of three in the semis, and two match series in the final. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But as it stands, uh, Chaumont took care of Perino problem three uh, zero. Tours took care of who Montpellier three zero. Yeah. Yep, uh, bummer for Danny Demyanenko. But then an upset. We had Saint Nazaire, a three-zero series win over the two-seed Nantes. Seven. Yeah, I love two, that. Three matches to none. I love it too. Is a bunch of North Americans on that team. Yeah. Ensign dropped twenty-four in that uh, fifth Hell place yeah. match. He was he was twenty-two for for, for uh, twenty-two for forty-five with two blocks. So that's not that bad. Uh, Jordan Ewart. Uh, had 19 uh, as well. Uh, Jordan Snitzer with eight. He was six for 11 with two blocks. So love also that for like Quinn uh, Isaacson. Oh yeah, and big shout out to Quinn Isaacson who also uh, set them to lead, to, to the win. So 14 yep. blocks for Cena's Air in, in, in that one. Four for uh, Spencer Helder. Big, so, big they have, yeah. oh, he's the lefty middle. Yeah, that's a pretty unique dude. Uh, so, San Nazaire awaits the winner of Toulouse and Torquang, who are going to match five. We get yes. one of those quarterfinals is good. Uh, Toulouse won actually today, down two to one. They're the sixth seed. They won the match today to force match five. I think that is, uh, I don't know, when is that? I don't have I'm very much vested interest in either of those two teams. Oh, it actually doesn't even say on, on Riley on Barnes is still holding things down for Torquang. Yeah, isn't um, the, is Brett Walsh setting that team too? No, Brett Walsh is played for Poitiers this year. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. I was confusing my French teams that had Canadians on them. Yeah, um, I don't think there's any other. Oh, Maxime Hervoir. Uh, I love Maxime Hervoir, former, former LBC uh, guy, Ohio State, Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State guy. He dropped 16 for this one in for Toulouse in this one. Uh, Florian Kraj. Nah. Yeah, Maxime's a great kid. I really like him. Um, I'm happy that because he started his career in the A1 division in France after Ohio State, then played a couple years in the second league and has worked his way back up. Is like has was been getting people's votes in the Discord as like a most improved player, like breakout player type of character. So I'm really, Maxime. Shouts to him. 
I'm really looking forward and interested in to watch. I think, Rob, potentially that that Chaumont versus Tools playoff match is potentially a final. I think whoever wins, I think whoever wins that matchup between Shomo and Tools is is uh is is going to going to go on. But I'm kind of pulling for Shomo on that one. I'm Joe definitely Worsley. pulling for Shomo. They've got four Americans, uh Worsley, that? Mike Marshman, Pat Gasman, and Dan McDonald. So all three of their middles are American that play regularly, and Joe might be the MVP of the league. So uh, I'm really happy for those guys. I'm rooting for them because they lost the tours in the final last year. So they've got some revenge to get in the semis here. I've taken so much flack in the Discord for suggesting that Joe Worsley might be just as good as Paolo Boro. He's really good. He's like out here winning. Like, like once again, if Joe Worsley was Italian, he would be in the Italian league. No, for sure. Yeah, there's there's no there's no question about that. Out of doubt. He's better than Lucas Spirito. Oh, way better than Lucas Spirito. Right? Like, yeah, he'd be probably like the yeah, he wouldn't be better than Ginelli Spertoli or probably even Poro, but he'd probably be fourth in that fourth. league among Italian setters. I would, yeah, I like in, just in setters in in general. I would put him like behind Briza, like him and Poro around the same area. Sure, yeah, and yeah, Kuchopa, Joe, like him, him Poro and Kachopa. Joe's real good, so I'm excited for Shamal. I hope that they can get this league. Uh, get on top of the league by the end of this thing, uh, but their format is really stupid, and it's really stupid, and they should be embarrassed about how stupid the format is. A uh, bunch of those American names we just talked about, Everett, uh, have uh, have some VLA connections, and that's the last thing we have to talk about. Because, yeah, because uh, whoa, whoa, wait, Rob, yeah. I want to say it. <laughs> of course, I want to say it. Um, real first, um, real quick though, uh, shout out to Glashen and Chris Meaton. Um, but Rob. We finally have a tier one winner in the VLA. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We've done it. Great job. Great job, everyone. Finally, finally, a tier one team wins a tournament. Thank you, Everett. I know it's rare. It's as rare as today's eclipse. <laughs> it's very fitting. Uh, yeah, congratulations to the Boston Bounce. They win the VLA East Division Cup. They were not the tier one team that a lot of people expected to win this tournament. But uh, Team LVC, uh, who looked pretty good on Saturday, got beat by a brand new team, the DC Dynasty. Got beat by the DC Dynasty. They swept them in the semifinals. It was a, but wasn't the DC Dynasty the team that you were saying that absolutely were very interesting to? to mm, yep, okay, that was okay. a dark horse new team. I definitely called that one. Uh, I, I didn't see an upset against LVC coming, but. Uh, yeah, good for the DC Dynasty. They made it real interesting. They um, got to the final where they lost to the Boston Bounce in four. I'm, I'm excited for Boston. Great team. Good guys. Uh, they looked really good. They made a couple pickups that I really liked. They had this new opposite in Hunter Oshman that I really liked. He was super dynamic. Um, but they, they've they been real close to winning a tournament like this and kind of breaking through for a while. This is, this is their third season in Tier 1. They've actually made the playoffs every year. Okay. But, they, but they've never won the East Division because that's always just LVC dominates it. But now that they won this tournament, uh, the only way that they they can't win the East Division is, is if LVC goes out and wins the VLA Cup, okay. which, is, which is possible. But uh, I'm happy for Boston. That is a good team and a program that's worked super hard and they played great ball. Like they Overall, they were the best team in this tournament. They, they went 4-0 and they're looking really good and they will be... Uh, one of the favorites going into the VLA Cup in May. So uh, congratulations to them. And uh, good time in Albany this weekend. Saw a lot of familiar faces. Um, had a good time. I flew back real early this morning, and I'm <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling after this weekend. Didn't get a lot of sleep. Mm, a little, what were you doing over there, St. Clair? Uh, like being sick and unable to breathe. That's, mm. that's been, my, my, been my big problem the last couple of days. Yeah, maybe if you didn't drink so many beers uh, after the games, you you wouldn't ha- you wouldn't be having having those problems. I do like the fact, Rob, that this year has been punctuated by different winners across the VLA um, and new winners at that. Right, like Boston winning this weekend um, and 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 other uh, other events in the past. Um, I'm happy to you know I'm happy that a, a, a tier one team has finally won a game. Or won a tournament, and, and I, I love that. Um, let's just see have have that happen more. Uh, but sounds like you you guys did a great job out there. Yeah, it was a good event. It was a good event. I'm happy with it. Now we get a, about a month, month and a half to prepare for the big one, which is the VLA Cup. Uh, we don't know exactly how many teams yet. There's a chance that it might be 48. 
She chance it might be 48 teams. We might be looking at 36 men's, 12 women's. You guys, I'm I'm looking at the tier. There's a lot of tier two teams, eh? Uh, the latest number I think in the league is 71. No, I thought. Ah, oh, I thought I was setting you up there for fun things. We uh, we just barely surpassed oh, the magic number. No. Uh, it was the, no. the magic. Yeah, I know because I know you posted about it in the yeah. Discord recently. <laughs> no. We had the magic number of 69 teams as of about two weeks ago, and then two more teams showed up. <laughs> so yeah, VLA is growing. It was a good weekend. I'm tired. Uh, enough said but uh we are making it through this show because we love you all i am sick i'm struggling but i love you all and i want to talk about volleyball but now everett i have no choice but to go and get nervous for my purdue boilermakers to go and hopefully win a Why are you nervous because you got a canadian leading you because uconn is just, way better just than like us. in world war one and just <laughs> like in world war two canada will lead the way america will come late to the party and Canada will lead the way. You know why the G- G- <laughs> Geneva Convention is in place? Because of Canadians. That's true fact. You go back to what Canada was doing in World War One. yikes. You're never going to cross. No one's ever going to say anything mean to me ever again in the Discord. Uh, I, oh, I, yeah? I, I, is that... <laughs> bro, no one's ever... Canadians, Canadians, World War One. we were we were not good people. We were, we, we were ruthless. I promise you this. I, I I absolutely promise you this. Look it up. Look it up. This is Canada, a... Geneva Convention, World War One. <laughs> Google. Take a nice and light and down a nice little rabbit hole. This is some little brother nonsense if I've ever heard it. But uh we appre- we You're appreciate so you. Bad from... about the War of 1812, we know. You tried to burn down the White House or you tried to take Canada. We turned you back at the border. We burnt down the White House. We said, <laughs> "Leave us alone. You've lent you've left us alone ever since, okay?" Yeah, you leave me alone now. I need to go watch my team. Uh go Purdue. Love we you love now. you all. Uh we'll get in the vo- get in the volleyball source Discord. The links in the description uh, to watch all the playoff matches this week. We will see you next week, probably Monday. Yeah, probably under, under an hour and a half tonight. Pff, look at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Hour fifteen. Yeah, I got to go take more cold medicine and get ready to watch Purdue. Maybe win a national champ, dude. You have no idea how how nervous I am about this. You have no idea. I might, I'm, 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 I might watch this game a little bit. Put it on the back. You should. You should all watch this game. I'm not even that big of a basketball fan, like I said last week, but I'm a massive, massive Purdue fan, and uh, I never thought in my life that that I would see Purdue basketball playing for a national championship in really anything or Purdue sports playing for a national championship in anything. So uh, let's go. All let's see if we can bring it home. All it took was a Canadian. All right, see you guys. <laughs> Have a great night. Uh, watch volleyball with us on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. You know it. Peace.